Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome back to tonight's uh, evening lecture by Rita Segato. We are a little late um, uh, because uh, we, um, uh, we couldn't stop discussing this afternoon section, so we, 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 we are in ongoing discussion since this morning. Uh, so you see it's a very lively um, conference. I'm very happy uh, that it is this way. Uh, nevertheless, um, let me welcome you for tonight's lecture by Rita Zegato, and uh, let me particularly, particularly warmly welcome uh, Professor Zegato herself, um, who is in the midst of the, uh, of the uh, mountains, uh, the, the Andi, uh, Anden, I don't know in English, um, and uh, um, has a little bit instable um, connection. So, uh, in case uh, she loses her uh, connection, uh, we just have to be patient. She'll be back and continue her presentation. So, Rita, um, I'm very glad uh, to have you with us uh, in uh, this conference. Um, very warm welcome to uh, you. Uh, let me briefly introduce uh, Professor Zegato to you. Rita Laura Zegato is Professor Emeritus of the University of Brasilia, where she taught in the Department of Anthropology and in the graduate programs of bioethics and human rights. In 2018, 2018. the, the Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid created the Anibal Kijano Chair and appointed her as its holder. In 2019, I like this, Particularly, the Universidad Nacional de San Martín in Argentina established the Rita Zegato Chair of Inconvenient Thought under her leadership. Zegato also participates in the coordination of the Afro-Latin American and Caribbean Study Speciali Specialization course of the Latin American Council of Social Sciences. And in 2022, she will be a visiting professor in the Latin American Studies program at Princeton University in the US. Throughout her career, Rita Zegato has been a visiting scholar at numerous institutions and taught graduate seminars at various international universities. She has received five honorary doctorates and numerous awards, including the Franz Fanon Award of the Caribbean Associ Association of Philosophy for Lifetime Achievement just this year. She did extensive work in the field of human rights. Among others, she collaborated with the National Foundation of the Indio in Brazil and with various women's organization, organizations in Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Honduras. Since 2013, she has worked as an expert witness in various courts. Rita Zigato published many books uh, amongst them um, translated to German, Las Estructuras Elementales de la Violencia, Wider die Grausamkeit, um, uh, from 2003, German 2021, so just uh, um, published, uh, and then 2007, uh, La Nación y sus otros, and 2016, La Guerra contra las Mujeres. Rita Segato, um, thank you very much. The title of uh, your lecture is being rooted in a particular, uh, yeah, in a particular nature, uh, refuting equivalence. Um, it's your floor now. Welcome. Um, hello, everyone. And um, I'll read a short text um, that I translated it into English for the sake of this conference from the rooted subject to the universal subject in search of the return journey to an ethics of, a non, of the non-standardized. I will narrate a process that occurs in a world in which I currently reside in the Andean Northwest of my country, Argentina. My argument has important precedents in other authors like Borges, Polanyi, and Escobar, Arturo Escobar, uh, which are the ones that may, I mentioned in the text. 
but its originality lies in the fact that my starting point is the descri description of a precise of precise facts that have been related to me, told to me, events that I that take place in the geography and environment that I know since I was very young and now I inhabit. This is the first text of a series, the, uh, the tip of the thread of an argumentative path that will develop the difference between rootedness and homologation, convertibility and commutability, consistent logic and paraconsistent logic, cumulative logic and additive logic. Um, a very concrete ethnographic example taken from an old text of mine um, published lately in two, 2007 in my book, The Nation and its, its Others, that provides access to what I want to expo expose and examine here. Papa, Pachamama is the name of the earth for, a, for the average inhabitant of the Andean region of Jujuy, the place where I am now. And to honor her fertility, people pay homage to her by feeding her, giving her a portion of all food and drink before they eat and drink in festivities. Giving food to the earth is how this gesture, so common in the region, is described. There are also privileged places for dialogue with the earth, wells, waterfalls, mountains, as well as particular times marked in the annual cycle for contact. The landscape where the shepherd families are settled and the expanses through which they travel with their herds are marked with mojones, stone altars marking points of contact with the Pachamama. These mounds are regularly increased in size with new stones deposited during prescribed occasions in the annual calendar, such as the señalada or marking of the herd, carnival or processions of on saints feast days. It follows that this is not the case of, of a simple interrelation of the ag agricultural cycle and the ritual cycle, but that they are one and the same in the indissoluble reality in the eyes of the inhabitants of the region. This makes it impossible to say, to speak of productive activity as a concept separate from worship activity. The relationship to the cosmos and the relationship to useful, useful space turns that our Western cognitive and linguistic habits distinguish constitute one and the same inseparable reality. A mountain is the physical aspect of a transcendental subjectivity with which it is possible to communicate through topographically idiosyncratic points. It is unique, endowed with different signifying attributes, animated, and through these points, it dialogues with its inhabitants. It is through them, these uh, stone uh, mounds that um, they offer water. Uh, it is through, the, through these places, natural places. It is through them that it offers waters, pastures, passages, and it, it, it is also through them that it receives care and offerings. So there is an interchange between people and what it's called, what we call nature, an exchange. Of, um, of things. During festivals just such as the señalada or branding of llama cattle, the point of cosmic contact is marked by a pile of stones called mojón, and it is at, at this single distinct point that the earth is fed. There, around it, ritual offerings are deposited. During carnival, Another heap of, of stones marks the place where the devil departs from and returns to and is buried when the festival of carnival is over. 
Other points of contact can be found on the trails that lead to the abras or mountain passages. The apachetas, stone mounds that are built along the pilgrimage routes and a second points in the mountains and springs and the mojones, stone mounds on the land of the families, their herd yards and boundaries are points marked by local history through which the co connection with the Pachamama cosmos is activated. It is through this point of contact that the hills and the land receive the chaya. It is through them that they are fed. Thus, the immense monta mountainous regions, monotonous and inexpressive to outsiders, becomes a text where human transits have inscribed and continue to inscribe their signs over a long period of time. Such demarcations testify to the persistence of a conception of inhabited space that is both immanent and transcendent. Also, the sense of community and the values and routines of reciprocity that govern human interaction correlate with the values and routines of reciprocity that govern the relationship with the land. Human relations are here only one aspect of relations with the cosmos and with the habitat. Only a proper understanding of this pattern of relationships between mountain, and mountain people and their physical environment makes it possible to assess the exact dimension of the change introduced by the arrival of an evangelical cults on the scene. Most significantly, the first thing that is done when a family converts to the, is to demolish the cairns or, the, or the, the mounds of stones that demarcate the space occupied by the family that is converting to the new creed. This demolition is done with the help of a truck or other, he, or, or other heavy vehicle. With the ritual leveling gesture, the key that regulated the old relationship with the natural space is destroyed, and the old relationship between the inhabitants and the physical space is abolished. The human inscriptions that had made each point a piece and piece of land inalienably singular are suppressed. Land changes its, its role and meaning. Rootedness disappears and the instrumental approach to the environment is imposed. As a consequence of the religion conversion, the landscape undergoes a profound transformation. The inhabitants of the Puna, which is the name given to the Altiplano in Argentina, begins to look at his horizon in the same way as he would look at any other horizon. Only the particular exploitation techniques are specific to it and remain part of its, its idiosyncrasy. The inhabited space is no longer a text that, that speaks about the long-term presence of a people. It no longer speaks about the community and its way of life. Space is transformed into a mere res resource for exploitation. I, open, I, often, sorry, I often asked evangelicals in the different villages where I worked how they can continue to practice señalada, which is the marking of the, of the herd, without nourishing the, nourishing the land. The answer was always the same. Señalada became a mere rural pastoral task barely necessary to recognize the flock. That is, the land and the animals cease to be manifestation of a living, common, shared spirit that runs through them and are transformed into things, exploitable and quantifiable resources. A mystique of the land and its utilities mediated by an obligation of reciprocity between humans and non-humans disappears. This process can be well described in Weber's 
in, sorry, in Weber's terms as a typical passage into modernity and the progressive disenchantment of the world that follows. The relationship with nature is no longer one of communication and mutuality, for it becomes one of subject object governed by instrumental reason. The environment is objectified and transformed into something external and opposed to the consciousness of its inhabitants. Everything that was qualitative and alive becomes quantitative and reified. The relationship with bodies is also altered and the Cartesian res, res extensa is imposed and with it, the pornographic gaze from the eye to the thing, inherent to the subjectivity organized by the pattern of coloniality. Along this path, life is a thing as life as a thing becomes a thing commodity. Land is no longer conceived of an oikonomia, but as an economy. There, the introduction of notions such as land measurement interferes with the pre previous spatial organization and introduces the concept of land as something divisible and alienable. The land life becomes the land thing, measurable and referable to a grid or universal equivalent necess necessary for the attribution of exchange value, surface, surface area, presence of springs and rivers, distance of roads for the transit of marketable products become part of the cal calculation of the price of the property. We thus enter a type of commensurability different from that which is part of the obligation of mutuality and reciprocity in the communal environment. Commensurability, previously directed, directed towards the objective of commuting inherent, inherent, inherent in economic barter, embedded, as Carl Polanyi so well defined in, it, in his work, The Great Transformation, which I call rooted in the community, lodged in a landscape, in a land among, among land people, umbilically connected in a cosmos rather than in a territory, that is to say, with a non-convertible territoriality, all of that will henceforth be oriented by the calculation of conversion. Convertibility based on a universal monetar monetary referent and commutability on the ground based on concrete everyday needs are opposing operations. This mutation is operated by means of celebrating religious conversion that demands the erasure of the marks of contact with the Pachamama cosmos. All those stone mounds are destroyed. So there are no places irreducible and there are not those places where the umbilical cord with uh, the cosmos uh, is, uh, is, made, uh, is made alive, is um, acceded, there is access to it. A religious gesture is transformed into an economic political gesture. For this reason, we can even dare to affirm, affirm that reciprocity is the missing slogan in the proclamation of the French Revolution, which would mark a fundamental difference with, this, with, with, with the other three, because liberty, equality, and fraternity are mandates emanating from the position of a third party situated on the platform of the universal subject who enunciates a general and abstract law. Reciprocity is inevitably rooted in the sense of situated and resulting from its embedding in a country or landscape irreducible to homologation, homogenization, and flattening of a territorialized nature. Reciprocity takes place on the stage of local and regional markets of the genetic plurality of the species 
and of the great variety of people's historical projects. Liberty, equality, and fraternity homogenize and homologize. They are from a world of convertibility in the landscape of an abstract, abstracted nature. Reciprocity links, binds, and is from the world of commutability of positions and possessions in the landscape of a concrete and vital nature. Only reciprocity and the principle of commutability can guarantee a radically and irreducibly plural world, where what exists is not homolog homologal, homologable in the sense that is not commensurable or comparable by means of homologation referred to a grid of the universal ultimate, ultimate, ultimately monetary equivalent. Non-homologable means that it does not find possible equivalence by means of a universal reference. And this, in turn, means that we are not in the habitat of the nature thing of life reified and transformed into, merchan into merchandise. We are in the dimension of the pluriverse as defined by Arturo Escobar. We are also in the atmosphere of the classification of animals of a certain Chinese encyclopedia of which Borges speaks and in which Michael, Michel Foucault finds his point of departure for writing la, eh, his um, Palabras y las Cosas. But here Borges' classification becomes a desideratum and a point of arrival and no longer within the framework, framework of designation and linguistics, but within the framework work of economics and politics. According to, this, to his classification, to this classification, Chinese, which is a fiction, um, which Borges tells in, in his text, the analytical language of Wilkins, animals are divided into belonging to the emperor, embalmed, pain, suckling pigs, sirens, fabulous, stray dogs, included in this present classification, transient, innumerable, drawn with a very fine camel hair brush, etc., having just broken the water preacher that from a long way off look like flies. He is saying to us, Borges, with his fiction of a classification of a Chinese encyclopedia, that we should realize that it, it is impossible to abstract life. On this economic principle, can give, uh, only this economic principle can give rise to an effectively democratic world. Because a democracy that does not have pluralism as its ultimate goal and supreme value inevitably becomes a dictatorship of the majority. And the various forms of fascism having nothing other than dictatorships of, maj of majorities. I do not want to forget mentioning here that in other com communally structured peoples, other practices have a function equivalent to that of the stone markers in the Andean north of Argentina. Other practices that indicate the irreducibility of the inhabited space, the impossibility of applying the rules of convertibility mediated by the universal monetary reference and determine the, determine the rootedness of its inhabitants. Something as widespread throughout the peasant and indigenous world of, of my continent, of this continent, as the burial of the navel in the birth of place, in the place of birth. Or the gesture I observed in the houses of African religion in Brazil, where when the saint comes down, when the faithful enters the state of possession by an orisha, the first thing that happens is that his or her foot expels the sandal and touches the ground because with the presence of the divinity in the, in the body, the earth is transmuted, effectively transubstantiated into African soil. This operation 
introduces a greater degree of complexity where the community celebrates its ritual, the foot of the divinity that arrives, marks the ground and transmutes it, transubstantiates it into the ground of rootedness that the slavery has not managed to cancel. A religious gesture that is political, a gesture of re-existence, which cancels the possibility of the homologation of, of inhabited space and the reification of nature. For political philosophers in general, with history conceived with history conceived in an evolutionary way, oikonomia, oikonomia becomes the state understood here as the administrative apparatus of a larger domestic economy. In his uh, disappointed work, Power and Glory, Giorgio Agamben, I, 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 and I consider that Agamben's uh, book as disappointing, really. Agamben, Agamben speaks of the transition from oikonomia to political economy. Uh, in this transition to political economy, the government is, con is concerned with the expansion of what was previously entrenched uh, uh, economy. The nation would then be public economy in the sense of an expanded, expanded domestic economy. From the story I shared with you, it is possible to understand that to consider this a transit as a simple evolution is an unforgivable mistake. It is not a transit, but the hijacking of a, of a way of being in nature, a way of being in nature, an economic perspective of a rooted communal type in which domestic management has not been expropriated of its politicity for its transmutation into a political bureaucratic state monetary perspective, a rooted subject that manages to a concrete and non-homologable standardized territory is held by a stick wielded from a universal subject that administers an abstract territory. It is necessary not to be seduced by the scheme that defines as a transition, the mutation from oikonoma, oikonomia to political economy, because when seen from our landscapes, it is not about the transition from admin, an administration of the immediate immediate a space in the sense of domestic property to the administration of a political public space, but of two incommensurable ways of being in the world and of thinking the world without possible transitivity, each one with its own conception of what nature is. It is not transition, but the effect of a process of constant colonization based on conditions given by a previous situation of historical oppression guaranteed by the conquest. Coloniality in permanent expansion of its borders and deepening of its impositions. It is the effect of a power relationship and should definitely not be described as an evolution of the mode of management. This transmutation from one economy to another, from one manager, management to another, from one nature to another, will have consequence for women's lives and will exacerbate the patriarchal order. But that is the subject of other texts. So I, uh, I finished here and so I am open I hope you understood. I'm very, I have a very accent reading in English, but I hope you can follow me uh, by reading the text. <laughs>